Hi everyone! So today we're going to try to solve a problem that I find very fun. And according to LeetCode, this is one of the more frequent questions asked by Google. Which, to be honest, for what it's worth, I don't think they're going to ask this question because it's already on LeetCode. But, eh, it's still a fun problem nonetheless. Let's go into it. This problem is called Number of Islands. Alright. Let's dive deep into it. Cool. Number of islands. So let's read the question. Given a 2D grid map of ones and zeros, count the number of islands. As an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally and vertically, you may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. So let's translate that. You're given a two dimensional grid. You have a lot of ones and a lot of zeros. Any of the ones that are connected horizontally or vertically, that's an island. Anything with zeros, that's water. All right. Islands cannot be connected diagonally. Um, so those are some key points. You know, I want to mention earlier, a lot of the time um, when a interviewer gives you a question like this, um, if they start being very specific and defining very obvious things, usually Usually that's an indicator that that matters, or that's part of the algorithm that needs to be considered when you're solving the problem. So in this case, um, what can we do? Um, let's look at an example. In this example here in the 2D array, um, <clears throat> row zero at element one over here, that's row zero at column run, that's a one. So that indicates that, okay, this is an island. Look at, look at to the right side of us. That's one, 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 bottom here, bottom here, bottom here, bottom here. These are all co connected horizontally or vertically, right? So that's one big ass island. So that's kind of obvious. And in this case, we have four ones in this corner, but there's one little lonely one in here that's connected diagonally. But remember what I mentioned earlier, because an island is only defined and connect by connecting horizontally and vertically. So this little lonely island, eh, it's another island by itself. And then of course the bottom one on the bottom right, it's another island itself as well. So that's num I'll put number three. So how are we gonna, let's, let's take a step back. How, how do we plan to solve this type of problem? If we start thinking about what type of algorithms are available to us to look at things in two dimensional, right? Um, we can think of a lot of things. But let's 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 go through it in a little bit more brute force way, maybe, and then we'll we'll, we'll try to solve um, this problem. So one we one thing we do need to know is that we we're gonna have to check all of these little elements for sure, right? So to identify how many islands that there are. Now let's put some code on the paper and start thinking about what we need to do. So the first step, I mean, if you're like, all right. Um, I do know that I'm given a grid and I'm returning some sort of number. So just make sure you have the return statement first. So let's let's create a counter. Um, let's counter some sort of count islands and set that to zero, right? And just make sure we know what we're doing, return the count islands as well. So we don't forget. All right, cool. Now the next thing we need to do is pretty much go on every element of this grid. So let's do something simple like that. For, I'm going to use ES6, let the row index in grid, and another four, let column index in grid, but for each row index. So what this really means is that, okay, at this particular element, check all these things cool we're gonna have to do something in here clean this up we're gonna have to check something and then do something afterwards so as we go along in this two-dimensional array what do we need to do we need to first of all identify if an island exists right so maybe our first condition is to check all right if my uh, grid at row index 
and at column index equals to a one because I'm assuming that all of these values in here are going to be string nature because pay attention to the detail here it has these two little print so these are all string of nature if that particular element here is equal to one let's let's increment our count count it I one plus plus cool so we increment this particular island by one and let's do something in here so what does that do something so if, if we were to just run this particular code what would it do it's pretty much going to go on every single element and count all the pieces of the island in this case i would expect our output to be nine one two three uh, okay let's try to do this this is a wrong answer by the way but i would expect this particular output to be nine because it's going to count all the elements which is the case but that's not what we want we don't want pieces of the land we want to count how the total size of the land so what are we going to have to do um, one of the things that you can think about is that okay once you are on a piece of land um, we know that this is already one land. Uh, we may want to actually start thinking about, hmm, if I start going to the next piece, um, if this is still a one, then it's going to increment my counter once again, which is not what I want to do. So before that even happens, maybe we should consider that, okay, when we're at that position zero, zero, at zero, zero maybe we want to do something with the things that are um, part of our definition of land. Remember when he said horizontal and vertically? So why don't, why don't we actually write a helper function? So what does it mean by number? I'm going to call this terraform. Terraform. So we're going to actually try to terraform things are like our existing spot and also things on our left, right, top, and bottom to become a body of water now so as we iterate through the next element it becomes water ready we don't have to think about uh, re-looking it as a piece of land let's look at some code and you know and then you guys will understand all right let's pass in the row index and the column index and pass in the grid boom cool so what is a terraform function going to do its main purpose here is to convert stuff around us to water. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is going to say, okay, well, my grid at row index, column index should be a piece of water. Cool. So that's easy. If that this becomes a piece of water, um, what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to have to start thinking about, okay, I want to convert things on my right, on the bottom, on the left, and on the top to water as well, right? So how are we going to do that? We could simply, since this function pretty much takes in two indexes and converts that per water, I could theoretically just call myself. That's called recursion, by the way. Terraform here, pass in the row index. I'm going to plus one in here, code column index, and press in the grid. So what this does is that it's going to add one to my row index. So I'm going to check stuff on this element now. So that's checking my bottom. Now let's check the stuff on my top. My top, which is going to be minus one, minus one put this minus one and let's chart right and left right plus one minus one so what this is going to do is effectively once we convert this into zero we're going to pass in zero plus one which is uh, this position down here with the column still at zero we're going to pass that in here and change that to a zero so this is going to become a zero and when we look at this element it's going to go negative one but uh oh 
what's going to happen here? Negative one doesn't exist, right? So that's where we actually have to think about, okay, well, hold on a minute. I got to exit out of this, this recursion. Otherwise, you know, it's going to go on infinite. So let's put that as one of the if conditions. If my grid at row index equals to undefined. So that's in this case where it's going to be floating in the air somewhere. Let's exit out of that. Let's return, return out of that statement. Cool. So that's going to return out. So this won't execute. Um, the next one would be like, okay, cool. Let's look into the something to our right. In this case, will be here. That's cool. That's going to convert to zero. But now let's look at something on our left. Oh wait, wait. Left is actually it. It's out of bounds as well, right? So well, that's also something that we need to get rid of so we don't escape. So we go here and column index. If that is also equal to undefined. Then get the hell out. All right. And then the final element is that, okay, well, once we are at a body of water, you don't want to convert water to water, right? Because that doesn't make sense. So we'll, we'll exit out of that as well. Okay. Grid at row index and column index. Well, that, if that is equal to, if that is equal to zero, great. Uh, then I'll exit. All right, cool. So let's recap on some of the our equation in here. Let's actually invoke this particular element. Terraform, and we're gonna pass in the row index and column index, pass in the grid. Now, here's a little kicker to take home and to think. I'm not gonna answer in this video, but you guys can probably think about it if you can find the reason why I'm doing this. Please comment below. I can't just send this in because if I send this in, it w it won't actually count correctly. However, I need to parse the int of this particular at value. Parse int. Why do I need to do this? Is that I I need to send I need to ensure I'm sending an integer down into this particular function. Now. I'll let you guys think about it later by your own time to see why I'm doing this. Cool. Uh, so once I do all this stuff, I think we are pretty good. So let's test out. Let's run the test for our existing case. Yay, it solves that. Now, the big question is, can this run through all the case scenarios, test scenarios? That's the drum roll, drum roll. And it passes. Awesome, sweet. So let me just recap on this question um, so you have a better understanding of what actually happened here. What we're actually doing is that on a two-dimensional grid, if I pass, if I go, I have to visit every element on that grid. If the element I'm on right now is an island or defined as one, I'm gonna make that, record that position, increment my island count, but then, as I know I'm on a piece of land, I'm going to start terraforming things on my right, my left, my top, and bottom to ensure that all those elements that's considered as one piece of land is going to be converted into water. So when I go to the next iteration, if I run the next loop, um, if I find a one, then I know that one is not part of the previous island I'm on. right? So in this case, it will never run. Um, to that one other line. And, and yeah, pretty much it. This solves the problem. Um, I know it went a little bit too quickly. Uh, I left a little hinter here. Let's see if you know why I did parse int um, as a little fun exercise. And uh, stay tuned and subscribe if you wanna do, listen to more of these videos. By the way, this I did this all in one shot again. Uh, no editing. I try not to edit and just give you the raw vanilla thing. It's almost 12 a.m., well 12 midnight. Right now, I'm tired, um, so I'm probably screwed up somewhere, but uh, I'm trying to improve on this channel too, improve on video, so feel free to comment. Give me some suggestions, and, uh, and peace. Have a good night.